type 2 diabetes can be reversed naturally with simple changes to your diet that don't have to cost a fortune. The amazing thing is there's more than one way to accomplish this, which is what we're going to be talking about today. There are four clinically proven ways to reverse type 2 diabetes. When it comes to your health, you want to understand the best options so you can make the best choice for you. So hit that subscribe button so you can understand how some of the biggest players in health and nutrition may be concealing some of the options at your expense. That being said, let's take a look at Dr. Sarah Hallberg from Verta Health speaking at the Low Carb Denver 2019 conference. Three clinically ways proven in the literature to reverse type 2 diabetes. Bariatric surgery, a very low calorie diet, and a low carbohydrate diet. Three ways in the literature, well documented. Wait a second, did anyone notice she only mentioned three options? Doesn't it seem like she's leaving off one more very important option for reversing type 2 diabetes? That's right, a whole foods plant-based diet, which is typically unrestricted in terms of complex carbohydrates from whole grains, beans, vegetables, and yes, even fruit. Our jobs are to be educated on all the options and to really be able to have a patient-centered discussion. Now, I fully believe, or I wouldn't be here today, that most people will choose low carbohydrate as an option. Many of you are already aware of Dr. Neil Bernard's work, including his 2006 type 2 diabetes study showing dramatic reductions in hemoglobin A1C and overall body weight on a plant-based diet over 22 weeks. In fact, Dr. Hallberg herself has published several literature reviews on the evidence supporting diabetes reversal, with one including the plant-based studies. We know that she is aware of six randomized control trials providing that a plant-based diet shows improvements in hemoglobin A1C and fasting blood glucose in patients with type 2 diabetes. So what's going on here? Hmm? All of us who care for patients do need to understand that there are other ways for people to go about the idea of reversal. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Just a moment ago, I showed you that she is completely omitting the plant-based diet as an option. Don't you agree that if presented with these options, just these options, most patients would not choose surgery or a diet that leaves them hungry? What does that leave them with? According to her, just a low carbohydrate diet. And we need to always remember that the ultimate choice about what a patient does for their health is theirs. Once you know diabetes reversal is possible, you'll agree it should be your choice how to move forward. But that doesn't explain why she would leave one of the best strategies off the table. At first, I thought she was going to rely on the argument that somehow all of the evidence supporting plant-based diets relied on calorie restriction, but in her review of the American Diabetes Association guidelines, she acknowledges the ad libitum vegan diet, in other words, all-you-can-eat vegan diet, did better than a calorie-restricted control diet. Well, we've had a paper published in the journal Nutrition on 1,615 of our patients who went to the clinic. And what we found was an average weight loss in seven days. All this is within seven days, eating as much as they wanted, food they loved. Nice. Uh, average weight loss was 3.1 pounds. Uh, the average cholesterol drop was 22 points. Uh, nearly 90% of people reduced or stopped all their diabetic 
and blood pressure medications as well as most of the other medications. Mm. And we know from Dr. McDougall's 2014 study that out of 194 people who came through his program with seven days of eating a starch-based diet with all-you-can-eat complex carbohydrates like potatoes and oatmeal, 90% of people who had type 2 diabetes were able to reduce or stop their medication within seven days. That's how fast a plant-based diet works. Wouldn't you want your doctor to tell you if there was an option where 90% of people were able to reduce or stop their diabetes medication after just seven days? But she has chosen not to share this option with you. What's even worse is that she is the principal author on multiple literature reviews which purport to have reviewed all of the evidence, and she appears to have dismissed plant-based diets as an option. New guidelines out last October endorsed low carb by the ADA in the EASD as a recommended eating pattern, and the new ADA standard of care. Make no mistake, these Halberg review papers are intended to influence public policy at the government level and at the organizational level, such as the American Diabetes Association guidelines. And I'm super pleased to report that they cited our trial when they made the change, putting low carb as a recommended eating pattern and acknowledge that low carbohydrate is the only eating pattern that can have re uh, removal of medications. Here's one reason why this matters because it is working. The revisionist science which excludes a plant-based option is being used to define the endorsed treatment options moving forward. This next segment is going to examine the science behind how Dr. Sarah Hallberg was able to justify excluding the plant-based option for diabetes reversal. So I want you to stay with me because this is going to culminate into some important takeaways at the end. As I mentioned, Dr. Halberg is the principal author on a 2019 narrative review of the evidence on reversing type 2 diabetes, as well as a 2019 comprehensive review of the American Diabetes Association guidelines recommended eating patterns. A group of doctors, including plant-based diet advocates, has responded to Hallberg's narrative review. We should be grateful for people like Dr. Shivam Joshi and Dr. Michelle McMacken and Dr. Robert Ostfeld for their efforts to create a balanced, national, evidence-based dialogue on this important topic which will save lives. We are now looking at Dr. Sarah Hallberg's criticisms of the plant-based diet research on type 2 diabetes. Despite the fact that she is aware of plant-based randomized control trials reversing type 2 diabetes without restricting the amount of calories people were able to eat, she still offered the criticism that some of the studies may have been influenced by caloric restriction. However, when reviewing the literature on low-carbohydrate diets, she refers to the loss of appetite people often experience on keto and low-carb as spontaneous caloric restriction, which instead of generating criticism from her, is viewed as a positive. Since we are talking about weight loss and how it impacts the results of these trials, a rock-solid case can be made that most, if not all of the improvements in inflammatory biomarkers and cardiovascular disease risk factors she touts as seen on the keto diet in the Verta Health type 2 diabetes trial can be attributed to weight loss, which I have covered in a separate video in this series. Next. She offers criticism of the 2009 published longer duration follow-up to Neil Bernard's 2006 randomized control trial by saying the benefits observed at the 22-week mark were seen to have declined 
by the 74-week mark. I guess those sustained 74-week results just weren't good enough for her criteria standards, despite the fact that the plant-based participants lost roughly 10 pounds, lowered their hemoglobin A1c, and dropped their cholesterol by 20 points. In her own review, she acknowledges adherence to low-carb diets is known to be a challenge for participants in trials of longer duration. The declining long-term results in Bernard's 2009 plant-based study are potentially explained by adherence, which is published in the paper, so it's not like she was unable to assess what was going on in this study. But on the other hand, the same type of declining results can also be seen in the low-carb trials she references to support her case, suggesting that the short-term benefits of very low-carbohydrate diets likely decline over time. This is particularly important. The group of doctors responding to her narrative review point out that the same thing happens in trials with very low-carbohydrate diets, but they also noticed incidents in the research she uses to support her case for low-carbohydrate diets where the participants in the keto group were receiving double the amount of behavioral support or so-called lessons for their keto diet compared to the people eating low-fat diets. They go on to cite four randomized long-term trials greater than 12 months of very low-carbohydrate diets for type 2 diabetes, which have failed to show benefits over a controlled diet high in carbohydrates. Did any of these studies even make it into her review? Hmm. None of these four flop studies were conducted in association with Verta Health, which Sarah Halberg and most of the co-authors on her paper have disclosed a financial conflict of interest with. So what's really going on here? Hmm? I do work for Verta Health, um, and I am an advisor at Adkins, and I have a major intellectual bias. Major. So I declare it, and I hope that we can get to a place in medicine where we can be forthright with our intellectual biases. She emphasizes the importance of giving patients the right to choose to reverse their diabetes. She emphasizes the importance of medical care providers being aware that reversal is possible and having the education needed to review these options with their patients. But at the same time, she declares an intellectual bias and excludes an entire treatment option which she is aware has been proven to work. According to the medical doctors who have reviewed her paper, she presents an overly enthusiastic narrative. Let's see if you can hear it. And low carb is now the standard of care. We are not some fringe diet. That's big, right? This is big. We are not fringy. The evidence doesn't allow that anymore. We are standard of care. This is a woman who is driven to create a future in which the keto diet obtains primacy as a standard of care in the management of type 2 diabetes. She has publicly admitted to being influenced by deep intellectual bias in preference of a low-carb keto approach. She is the medical director of a scalable medical technology company called Verta Health, which focuses on providing patient-centered behavioral support for diabetes management using a ketogenic diet. Mark my words, in the next few years, there will be multiple keto clinics in every major city. This phenomenon represents the maturation of the low-carb industry over the last several decades. 
If you want the people of this country and your loved ones to have access to the best treatment options available, then I want you to share this video on social media and demand that Dr. Sarah Hallberg explain why she is allowing her intellectual bias to influence policy-making decisions when she is positioned to become a multi-millionaire many, many times over once Verta Health rolls out nationwide and becomes a publicly traded company. Tag the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Tag Garth Davis because he knows what time it is. Be grateful that we have doctors who are willing to risk their careers to speak the truth in the face of this burgeoning and aggressive industry which is funding research and influencing public policy. This video is the latest installment as part of an ongoing expose series focused on Verta Health. No other analyst is providing this level of content for free, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and leave your feedback in the comments section. If you haven't already seen the other videos in the Verta Health expose, then I want you to click on the thumbnail that pops up right now. Y'all know what time it is. Red Pill Vegan. Next.